That means you're in total and complete union with Christ in your being right now. That's not a union that you're seeking to attain. That's not a union that you got to perform to get. That is a union that came as a direct result of you saying, Jesus, I, I acknowledge you as my Lord, and I accept the invitation to join you in your life. And God gave you this most beautiful gift. And you know what that most beautiful gift that God has given you? It is your will. The reason God gave you a will is because he doesn't want robots. He doesn't want people that are just programmed to serve him. He doesn't want people like that. He wants people that are sons and daughters out of their own desire to serve him, out of their own desire to submit to him, out of their own will to say, you know what? Even though I'm, even though I, I'm independent, even though I have a will, I choose to submit that unto you as my God. And so Jesus comes onto the scene and he reveals that right there. I surrender. I yield. And this man named Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he begins to talk to Jesus and Jesus begins to explain this process to him. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 3. And he begins to explain to Nicodemus what it means to be born again. And I want you to reconsider what it means to be born again, what it means to be indwelt by God's Spirit. If you are a born-again believer in here today, you are indwelt by God's Spirit. And I want us to reconsider what that may mean. In John chapter 3, we see right here in verses 1 through 6. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one know, can do these things unless God is with him. Jesus responded and said to him, truly, truly, I say to you, that means we need to pay attention. Unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus said to him, how can a person be born when he is old? He cannot enter his, uh, his mother's room a second time and be born again, can he? Jesus answered and said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born of water and the spirit everyone say spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that listen to this that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit if the main emphasis of the new testament is the empowerment and indwell indwelling presence of Holy Spirit, then I think we need to shift the way that we think and learn to begin to think and be led by the Spirit of God. By this text right here, it says you are born again by what? By the Spirit. We all understand we're not born again according to the natural. We're born again according to the spiritual. So when you connect this passage over, I want you to consider something with me, family. I know this is basic. Do not lose me right now. I understand this is basic, but we need to get this. I want you to consider 1 Corinthians 6, 17, where it says, The one that has joined himself to the Lord has become one spirit with him. Do you realize that word one means singular to the exclusion of another? That means when you became, uh, became a born again believer, your spirit and God's spirit became one. That means you're in total and complete union with Christ in your being right now. That's not a union that you're seeking to attain. That's not a union that you got to perform to get. That is a union that came as a direct result of you saying, Jesus, I, I acknowledge you as my Lord, and I accept the invitation to join you in your life. Let me ask you this question. How would you respond if I just told you you won the lottery? I just told you that God made you his home. You see,
See, what Jesus came to reveal is that, is that God was making us his aim. Heaven was making you its aim, but yet we're still trying to make heaven our aim. But heaven has made us its aim. I want us to reconsider what it means to be filled with the Spirit. I want us to reconsider what it means to have the indwelling presence of God living on the inside of us. That means God, the creator of the universe, decided to make you his home, decided to fill you with his Spirit, to bring you in total and complete union with him. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says, And as he is, so also are you in this world wow what Jesus came to reveal that his answer to the world's problems is people filled with his spirit what if you realize you are the answer to the prayer you've been praying What if you realize that the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you is the answer to the city that you live in, is the answer to the world that you live in, is the answer to the job that you work at, is the answer to the school that you attend? What if you realize that the Spirit of God that's inside of you, the one you're in union with, is the answer and all he's waiting for is your obedience? There are many things that God has had to do by his sovereignty simply because the body has refused to do by her responsibility. Are you guys thinking? We live in, in, in the tension of truths right here. When you study the Bible, you see that the Bible is written in a paradox. You have a truth here and a truth here. They seem to contradict, but they don't. They actually balance each other out. So in, in one sense, we're waiting for revival. In one sense, we're, we're pressing in for revival, while on the very flip side, revival is waiting on you. I want us to reconsider what it means to be indwelt by God. I want us to reconsider what I said yes to. And when my spirit became joined with his spirit, we became one. And now I am as he is in this world right now out of my spirit. I am just as righteous. I am just as holy as God is. Are you getting me? That, that, why do you think 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says you are a new creation? Oh, man. All right. We got to read the Bible. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 15. I want you to get something here. Verse 15 says this. And he died for all so that they, they who live might no longer live for themselves. Yes, I love the Bible. It says, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf, listen to this, therefore from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. So if you don't recognize anyone according to the flesh, then how do you recognize them according to the Spirit? It says, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we now know him in this way no longer, so then how do we know him? By the Spirit. Let me ask you, where does His Spirit abide? Inside of you. Then it begins to say this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. creation. He is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. That means your born-again spirit has become completely new in union with God. You are separated and set apart from who you used to be prior to the cross. 
You need to realize you didn't just simply go to the cross. You actually went through the cross. And when you went through the cross, everything that you were prior to that has been cut away from you. That's why you're now a new creation. That's why now in your spirit, you carry the nature of God. Why do you think the devil is always speaking to you from your past? You see, Satan speaks to you from your past, calling you to your past, because he wants you to create a cycle that's been broke off. But when God speaks to you, it's from your future, calling you to your future. Oh. You see, this person right here has never done an ounce of drugs in his life, but the person I used to be prior to the cross, I was nothing but a dirty, rotten sinner, a dirty, rotten drug addict that lived in crack houses. But this person that you see right here, listen, he has never touched an ounce of drugs in his life. This person right here has been changed, transformed, renewed. This person right here is righteous and holy and pure. Oh. I'm not going to associate myself from someone God cut off. I want you to reconsider what it means to be indwelled by God's Spirit. I want you to reconsider what it means to be born again. I want you to reconsider what it means to be a new creation. And this is better than you thought. That means God lives inside of you. That means you and God, you're the majority. That means you don't need 55,000 intercessors to come into agreement with you so that you can fulfill your destiny. The only person that needs to agree with it is you. The only person that needs to believe it is you. Huh. I'm not telling you that this right here is going to change all the circumstances in your life, but what I am saying is those circumstances in your life no longer have the power to change you. Why? Because there's an internal work that's taking place. There's an internal job that's already been accomplished, and that is the work of Christ dwelling on the inside of you. That's why the Bible says in 1 John 4, greater is he that's in you. Whoo! That means Satan is victim to your victory. 